We are 75% of the way there. That's right, block number nine goes right in that spot. This is what it looks like. We're gonna have a blast sewing it together. Let's get started. And how exciting is that, really? I mean, we are gonna do our ninth block of the 12 today, and then we only have a few more left to do. That We're like, like I said, 75% of the way there. So this is super cool, and by the way, if it's your first time, welcome everybody to Making It Fun. I am Rob Appel from Michael Miller Fabrics. I am super tickled, ooh, that's ticklish, that you are all here today. Sorry, I'm feeling extra goofy. I will try to settle down for today's tutorial. If it's your first video with us on our peek into Batik, this has been a block of the month, so long started back in January. The patterns are totally free and we are working on pieced patchwork patterns here today at Making It Fun, but we also offer the AccuQuilt uh, cutting instructions that go with their block system that's fantastic. So you can do it either way, the blocks all line up. If you look over on the design wall, you can see how awesome things are going. And I'm playing a little trick on you. We will be putting sashing in these. I'll do a whole finishing video for you all after we do all 12 blocks. But I think it looks pretty, Pretty cool, pretty radical this way as well with the way that those black um, secondary designs come together with the diamonds in the square. So today is a super fun, super easy block. We're gonna need to focus on our instructions, so please just uh, bounce into that link below into our description, and then you can follow the link over to uh, Making It Fun, which is our blog, and we have these fantastic free patterns there as downloads for you. This is what they look like, and what we're gonna really do is we're gonna focus first on making all of our half square triangles. The entire block as you can see over here on the original quilt is all half square triangles and a few of these little solid units. So our half square triangles are all going to be made from three uh, inch squares and so you're going to need um, a few of the black ones, you're going to need uh, one of the turquoise ones, I can't even remember anymore, a couple of the green, a couple of the yellow, and the names of the real fabric are hash dot. We have turquoise, meadow, mustard, and then when we do our borders we're using our fantastic uh, marble and that is the whirlpool color there. When we get down into the squares, we're just going to be making four of our little two and a half inch squares and our half inch square, our half square triangles will twin, blah, 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 we'll trim down to the two and a half as well. So let's get into how to make half square triangles and there's several ways that are out there. This is the kind that is the easiest when you know what size you need later on. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take a moment and I like to use a real fine uh, sharpie marker or a pencil you could but something nice and light and I'm going to go ahead and mark a diagonal line from edge to edge. I did that just by dropping my ruler on, drawing a line very quick and I'm going to do that on all of my turquoise and all of my mustard squares because that will help everything line back up together and then once that has been done I'm going to simply go right sides together onto a solid black, and like I said, the, the instructions will show you how many of which ones to line up with which. As we come on over to the sewing machine, I do need to point out, this drawn line now is going to be a, a guideline. We're not gonna run the needle on that line, we're gonna run the needle a quarter inch from that line. Now I'm gonna lower my presser foot and I'm gonna stitch on this side. Maintaining that quarter inch seam allowance. And then I just come all the way to the end, I lift the presser foot so I have a little bit of slack, so I can then slide it over, and now the presser foot's gonna go on the other side, see? Like this, and I can just lower my presser foot again, and now we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna sew that all the way through. So then as we come off of the machine, we're just gonna basically go ahead and just using a ruler or template to protect your hand, and then I'm gonna go ahead and rotary cut down that line we just drew on there, and that's gonna go ahead and yield us two half square triangles with this method. So then what I need to do is I need to go ahead and I wanna press these over to the dark side. So I'm gonna hold up my black fabric in the air. I'm gonna let the iron do the work as it glides over there. And now the seam is leaning into the darker fabric, and we do that to help prevent the seam showing up on the other side when possible. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to trim these down to two and a half. And to trim them down to two and a half, what I really want to do is I want to find one of these diagonal lines on my ruler on a corner. And then I'm going to go ahead and I first find the diagonal and I make sure I'm all lined up. And then when possible, I'm going to cheat up and past 
this two and a half, two and a half line because what I want to do, just like if you were cutting yardage, I want to trim to square. I want to true it up on this side, making sure that diagonal stayed down the diagonal, of course. And then when I rotate this like this, I'm going to go ahead and then lay that two and a half right there. I'm looking right for that point at the two and a half. Diagonal still goes through. And then I can come up here and I'm going to trim that. And I do them all at the same time. So I make all my half square triangles and then I just go through and trim them, finding that diagonal, looking past the marker you need. Today again is two and a half. And I also will point out again as I do that again, watch what I'm doing with my rotary cutter. So I'm going to cut from the inside of the ruler or the edge of the ruler up because this keeps me from hitting the blade on the tip. Now I'm cutting the same way and going backwards because it's such a short little run and it's easy enough to do on my hands. I'll sweep that up later, maybe. <laughs> okay, but now we have our half square triangles made there. Like I said earlier, as I was stumbling along with the numbers necessary, I'm going to end up with two that are the turquoise and our jet black combo. We are going to have four that are the mustard and the jet black. We're going to have six that are our meadow and our mustard combo. And then we also, as I mentioned earlier, have four of these little two and a half inch solid squares that are from the same turquoise there. Now, the easiest way to do this is gonna to be to follow the instructions. Come on, I mean, that's why we print these things out. And if you look right here in this little diagram, it's actually showing you square by square the exact orientation I would like you to do to follow the pattern. And then we'll just sew them together in rows and we'll do all of that here in a second. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep this right in my line of sight. I'm gonna slide all of this down and I'm gonna start building this row here. And when you see it, you can see that this black triangle is there pointing that way. And then I'm gonna grab one of the gold and the black ones and I'm looking at it and I can kind of also see in the instructions that the fabric is kind of following through, then those blacks kind of forming a line too that way. So then I've got a gold and a green, and that's going to go green down like that, and then a solid blue. And now, just for a little fun, is the solid blues are going to basically run as a diamond board through there. We're going to have four rows, right? So pop, 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 pop. You can put those in really easy, and sound effects included today. Okay, now we're going to bounce right back over and I've got this time a black triangle pointing in. And again, I was pointing out, you can see the fabric here is lining up or the, the color fabric, the print fabric is lining up. Okay, then we're going to do one of the green and the gold. Green up just like that there. Okay, the other end of our blue is a green and a gold and our gold is down now. Okay, and the other thing I noticed right away in the block is the way that these greens kind of form kind of an outline and they'll do the same down here again. But let's just take it piece by piece. It's the easiest way to do these kinds of layouts. Okay, pointing down, pointing in the same orientation that way, and then it's going to end over here. Green up. Gold down, blue up, and now I just want to take a moment, ah, deep breath, and I really want to look, make, look to make sure that the block is perfectly symmetrical. Make sure that you don't accidentally have one of your half square triangles in the wrong orientation, and this is exactly here what you're looking for as you get ready to go ahead and build these into the machine. Construction is going to be very easy and I'm just going to work in the rows that are closest to me so that I don't mess up the orientation as I go. So I'm going to go ahead and fold these over and remember my trick. I always want to be looking at the second part, the second unit, the block, the strip, whatever it is, as I go into the sewing machine so I can just sew and build on. So this is number two. As I lay these together here, I'm going to need to rotate it into my sewing machine. And I'm just using my quarter inch edge, edge guide. Boy, am I tongue-tied today. And now I should be able to come over, fold that one out, and I know this is the seam. But if you're confused or concerned, just rotate it back in. Make sure everything is working the way you want it. Now you know that was the seam. So you can drop that on like that.
glass seam here on the solid. Really can't get that one wrong. I guess unless it had a little print you were using of uh, orientation. But this one being a fun basic from Michael Miller, easy to just throw it on, throw it and go it. Okay. Now, one of the things I do get a kick out of doing here at the show is I do a lot of different kinds of patchwork construction or sewing in, in general. So I do different methods depending on what makes the most sense. So watch, see this? Normally you'll see me press after every seam, right? But today you notice I didn't. I just kept building on and building on as I go. And I went ahead and I need to drop this back into the appropriate orientation. And I'm not gonna press this yet because what I really wanna do is I wanna sew the rest of these together. And I'm gonna show you this cool little trick to iron them to allow it to make your seams nest and make all of the rows go back together pretty easy. But I got a little work to do. I'll be back in a second. Let me keep stitching these together and get a little ahead of you so I can show you how I'm going to press these rows here in a second. Okay, and as I finished stitching on that last block into that row, I just again need to make sure I have everything back in the correct orientation. And now what I wanted to teach you about my ironing process is I'm just gonna grab this with my left hand because I'm very right-handed. And for this first row, I'm going to press in the direction from what would have been the right side of the block over to the left side of the block. All four of these little seam allowances are gonna now all be heading this direction. Okay, so then when I drop this back on the table, what I need to do now is I need to grab this from this side. Then as I press from this direction, I can just go ahead and press up. And I basically looks like I'm ironing the same direction, which I technically am, but I rotated the little row or the little uh, column. I guess it's a row today. You geometry buffs always are getting me because you know I love my math. But now this way, the things are uh, heading in the different direction. So again, grabbing from this side, Pressing. And then finally grabbing from the opposite side and pressing one last time, super easy. Okay. And this would be a great time to make sure you have everything correct do I? Can you see it over there? Sometimes you catch it before I do. I know. I know. Okay. Looks terrific. So now what I wanted to point out is these two rows and on the back side, I'm hoping you can tell, but basically I have one seam laying one way and one seam laying the other, which is going to make it so that I have a easier time lining up my points, my, my little matches of my blocks and keeps everything nice and flat, super easy to work with. Now, I hope you were paying attention because I actually don't remember which row I'm actually now looking at. And that's okay because I'll be able to check on the table. And you can see me using my hands to just manipulate that seam allowance, make sure everything lines up. Coming back around here, lining up my last little corner edges. So now in this instance, I do want to press after I finish, okay? And I want to press into the next work so I know that's where I started because that little blue turquoise hash dot square on the corner. So now I'm just going to press again into the seam this direction. Bring it back over here, make sure I've got it correct. I'm gonna lay this row on top of the block that we're starting to build. Now I always want my work going back into the machine so that the heaviest part of the fabric or the heaviest part of the new project is down on the feed dogs. This will help everything else sew together nicely. Okay, again, all pressed out, looking great. I think that's how we started to begin with there. And, oh, nope, sorry, there it is. So it follows your 
pattern instructions like I asked you to print out, download, and follow along with me today anyway, so we might as well use them correctly. Now again, back to the design wall. I just want to point out for a second, if you look around each of our centers of our blocks, we're using the jet black and the really cool marble fabric to form star blocks around everything else. Now, each month it's been the exact same construction, but I'm going to walk you through it here. It's incredibly simple. We're basically going to make a series of like flying geese style blocks. We're going to need uh, four of these rectangles. They are eight and a half by four and a half. You're going to need four black, what will become cornerstones, and those are four and a half by four and a half. All of our squares will be. Okay. You're going to need eight of your marble, and those are four and a half squared as well. They have a line drawn on the back side of them. We're going to go over that here in a second. And what we are really making is technically four of these to start with, but towards the end we take two of them and we throw a few more of those cornerstones out on the outside to make it super, super simple. But like I said, I'm here to teach. I'm excited you're still with me, so let's show you how it's done. Now, if you've seen me do this before, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take one of these squares and we're just going to line it up here. And I'm really lining up the outside three edges, making sure that I'm sewing a diagonal from the center down to one corner. Doesn't matter where to for now as we start. Now this time as I approach the sewing machine, it's important that I do point out that that line is now our sewing line. We're going to run the needle right on top of that drawn line, or if you're concerned that it might show up in your work, you could stitch just to the left hand side of it. You can see just following nice and slow right through we go there, super easy. Now the key to this is we're going to go ahead and trim before we press. And what I want to do is I want to save our scraps that are left over because they will actually sew down into a perfect three and a half inch half square triangle as well that we will be using in, in video 14 because we're doing 12 videos on the blocks. We'll do a 13th video on the finishing and then I'll do a bonus video because I've got a bazillion of these half square triangles left over. So now I'm actually taking a real good care to make sure I'm cutting a quarter inch from that drawn line. And that's because, like I said, I have saved eight of these. We'll have eight times 12 when we're done. Please don't make me do that math in front of a camera right now. But I know I've got a pile of them. Does that count for anything? Okay. Now, what we're going to go ahead and do, we're going to come on over and we're just going to press. And actually, I'm kind of pressing up into my turquoise block. I'm pressing up into that new add-on to make life easy. This is what easy looks like there. Now, this is the part you really need to focus on. Okay, we're making a triangle. So just make sure that when your drawn line comes in, it forms a triangle. You can see that triangle there kind of following that line there in the black. Again, watching all three edges. And now as I come on over here, I'm just going to start out on the corner. I'm going to stitch right down the center or slightly to the left, your choice of that black drawn line a second ago. Again, we are trimming before pressing, and that was to make sure that that little corner worked out for us. Watch, I'll show you. Do take your time here, because we are going to use these again later on. Set them aside. Come on in here, and we're going to press over. And by putting on one, trimming it, then pressing it, it really made it super simple to get a really nice, crisp corner there, and then that's going to get lost in our quarter inch seam allowance in a moment. What we first need to do though is we're going to sew on these cornerstones on these outside edges so that we will technically have two that are built full size with the cornerstones and we will have two that are left just as our flying geese units like that. So let me get these put on here and then we're going to put these right around the outside edges of our new cool block number nine peek into batik so long we've been having so much fun with. And as I'm coming off the machine here, please notice that I actually just put on both cornerstones at the same time. And now I'm heading over to the iron. And for the cornerstones, I'm going to iron into the cornerstone or away from the turquoise fabric. And then when we get into the blocks, I'm actually going to iron into the block so that everything has that same cool little nesting effect. And in order to do that here, let's just go ahead and grab our center unit and drop it down. 
And the only other thing you really need to be careful and pay attention to is that your points point out so that you get the awesome star that you've been working to build with me today. Oh, that's gonna look terrific, okay? So let's just grab one of the short sides. You start with your shorter sides. I'm just gonna line that up nice. And as you can see now, both of the short sides are on. And now we're gonna press into the block like I promised before, and that's gonna help those other seams all nest on there nice. Okay, so pressing from the new little flying geese unit into the center, pretty dang easy. Some threads to trim out today. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna grab my first long run border matching up those seams again where the cornerstones match in. And you can probably tell by the smile on my face, I just finished those last few stitches. I can't wait to show you how this looks. Let's get it all pressed out and beautiful. This really has been a super fun project for me. I've never really done like a block by block, month by month. And I've been just going at the same pace that all of you have been doing just one, basically just one day before you see me do it. I'm getting my prep work done, having fun with it. I did get all my supplies early, so I had plenty. But boy, hasn't that turned out wonderful. I got some threads to trim again. I am sorry about that. I'm a kind of a slob. I told you I'd be crazy today at the beginning of the video, and I guess you got exactly what I promised. So anyways, yeah, super cool. Block number nine looking terrific. As I mentioned before, please follow the link in the description below over to our blog at Making It Fun. And we have uh, fantastic instructions for both the patchwork like we did today, which was pieced and cut with rotary cutting instructions. We also have the AccuQuilt instructions. There's a bunch of fantastic Michael Miller brand ambassadors that have been participating in this so long as well. So if you look across Facebook or if you look across Instagram, you'll get to see a bunch of other folks' takes on this project. And we've just been having a great time with it. So again, I'm so glad you were here today. I will see you in another month with another block from the peak into boutique uh, quilt or block of the month as we so as we go kind of fun project I will be back in the following Wednesday with something else who knows what it will be and I got to get out of here before I tie my tongue in full knots again today I just got too dang excited to see all of you until next time adios amigos What, are you actually still here? That's fantastic. Make sure you check out some more of my other fabulous content right here on YouTube. I think it's terrific. Please subscribe while you're there and make sure you hit that little notification bell so you don't miss another moment of the fun.